Dronescaping Britain presents 20 Fascinating Hill Forts of West Wales. Welcome to Dronescaping Britain's Hill Forts of West Wales. In this episode, we visit Bryn Mein Kairai, Kaya Cadugan, Penna Banai, and Penna Frod Cloyd. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, subscribe, or click the bell notification icon to be notified when the next episode is posted. Types of hill fort. Archaeologists have categorised hill forts into two main kinds, the contour and the promontory. A contour hill fort means the fort has been built to wrap its way around the contours of a summit, as seen at Foyle Dragan. A promontory hill fort refers to a fort that is sited on a protruding knoll of land overlooking the landscape from high above. These can be found overlooking the sea, a confluence of rivers or dry land. An example would be Voilamunt. Lesser known are the hill slope and plateau forts. A hillside fort is protected by a steep side of a mountain or a hill to one side. Plateau forts, situated atop hilltops or plateaus, commanded impressive panoramic views, offering unparalleled control over surrounding areas. An example being Maiden Castle in Dorset. An even lesser known type of fort is called a marsh fort. An example is Bryn Main Karai, which is situated in low-lying land upon a wedge of slightly higher ground. The earliest hill forts, probably built in the Bronze or Late Neolithic, are described as univalate, meaning that the fort had only one line of ramparts. Over time, some forts were redesigned and a second line of ramparts were added. These forts are described as bivalate, owing to this secondary line of surrounding ramparts. Later forts, built with the more complex construction, are described as multivalate forts, good examples being Maiden Castle and Old Oswestry. These multivalate forts boasted complex gateways into the interior with convoluted ways through the entrance. Access areas seem specifically designed to trap or deter unwanted visitors or aggressive invaders. Passing into the fort, the visitor would advance through a lower level, watched by armed guards from a higher level above, their advantageous positions subordinating the incomers. However, most hill forts appear to be a statement of power and territorial ownership as local chieftains chose to build impressive-looking defensive structures. Some Welsh hill forts with a grand facade hide a small univalate fort behind, probably constructed with wattle and daub or the wooden palisade. Perhaps the massive frontal features were intended to trick potential foes coming from a particular direction, as, usually, serious raiders could easily attack the lesser defended rear of such a fort. Hill forts of the Priscilla Mountains seem to show military characteristics, suggesting that they were designed to repel and defend against more serious incursions. It is possible that the hill forts of Cardigan Bay were strategically placed to guard against invasion from the sea. Marauders such as the Picts or tribes from Ireland, the Mediterranean or North Africa could raid an undefended coast. If these raiders intended to steal people for slavery, it would make sense to offer security to the local inhabitants while displaying a show of strength and defence with an impressive hill fort. So let's bring on our first hill fort. Thirteen. WA four three four four. Bryn Mine Kairai, Kethlan Keredigion. Possible marsh fort or defended enclosure located on a river terrace a few metres above the Avon Tavy floodplain. Formerly a subcircular earthwork, the site is now occupied by the village of Kethlan and the B4343 runs through it. Despite major destruction of the interior, approximately 80% of the circuit bank survives, forming the boundary of modern housing developments. 
It is possible that the road passing through from north to south may be the site of the original entrances. Excavation found a long history of occupation, possibly Neolithic, certainly Early Bronze Age. An older palisaded enclosure was succeeded by a rampart and ditch in the Late Bronze Age, Early Iron Age. This defended enclosure is unusual being built on a low ridge adjacent to the Avant Tavy. Also, a housing development infills the enclosure in the form of the village of Cunnan. It is rare for a modern community to live in the very same footprint as our Iron Age ancestors who, in turn, may have replaced a community on this site from the Bronze Age. The B4343 intersects the enclosure following the course of the old Roman road to Carmarthen from San Helen. In a local legend, there was a Welsh saint called Tegiwik, whose beauty attracted a local chieftain named Cunnan. This man forcefully abducted her, but she was soon restored. Cunnan paid for his misdeeds by granting lands in Garth Bibio and making them free of services forever, which was apparently sanctioned by the Pope. There is no public access, barring the road running through the modern development. Fourteen WA two three zero nine Kaya Kadugan Keflan Keradigion. A small univalley contour hill fort sited on a distinct hill above the Freud Canon Valley and above the Avon Tavy. In a strong position with precipitous surrounding slopes to the north and east, defined by heavily robbed stone wall and ditch, now scree like, but traces of the original rampart face are still visible. Blocked entrance and fire destroyed on the northeast. Four semicircular building platforms lie in the interior. Excavations between 1984 and 1989 by St David's University College Lampeter recorded details of the blocked northeast facing entrance, shown by carbon 14 dating to be between the 4th and 5th centuries BC. They examined an area of the interior with the remains of two circular structures, one of which was multi-phase, its sequence interrupted by a four-post building. Occupation may have extended into the Roman period with subsequent reuse. Lampeter University's general survey in Keradigian has studied Kaya Kadugan over a number of years. A collapsed and burnt gated structure with six post holes was found in the northeast corner, along with some fragmented animal bones, which rarely survive in this area's acid soil. Sheep and goats' bones outnumbered cattle and pigs and dogs' bones. Cattle may have been rarer and thus a status symbol in the Iron Age. Viewed from above, this fort's tumbled revetments arise from fallen material from its former walls. This fort has an interesting prehistoric context as it appears to have been associated with ancient field systems enclosed in archaic dry stone walling that occupied the opposite hills. Spindle whorls, similar to those found at Pendinus, have been discovered, as have amber and glass beads, among other Iron Age items. A four-post structure found here may have been a grain store. Dated to between 400 BC and 90 BC, Kaya Kadugan may have continued into the Roman period. Cunnan was a legendary chieftain said to be associated with the nearby Brynman Kairai, also known as the Bryn Cunnan Fort, situated within the local parish of Kechlan. The small Freud Cunnan River runs 150 metres below the Kaya Kadugan hill fort. A little way further upstream, Cunnan's grave is said to lie under a massive collapsed standing stone. A Grithif ap Cunnan, the King of Gwyneth, and a Cadugan ap Blethon, a Prince of Paris, became allies fighting Norman incursions during the 11th century. Before the Normans arrived, the many kingdoms of Wales had been in constant warfare with each other, 
and in legend it is said that the fort of Kaikadugan once belonged to the King of Cardigan, and it was named Gaia Morris after him. But Cadugan attacked the kingdom of Dehaibath, which today is in the area of Ceredigion, and captured Caia Morris, renaming it Caia Cadugan. After one battle with the Normans, Cadugan and Cunnan were forced to flee to Ireland in a humble skiff. The following year, they returned to Wales and reclaimed part of Powys and Ceredigion. We know the hill fort, being of Iron Age origin, is much older than the medieval period, but with so many name associations, there must be some kernel of facts embedded within the legends. There is no public access, but a public footpath runs across to the south, with views and vantage points from across the valley. Fifteen WA two three four one Penabanai Keradigion A narrow elongated univallate partial contour hill fort sited on a prominent steep sided spur above the headwaters of the Avon Tavy above Strata Florida Abbey. It has a single bank around most of the circuit, apart from at the northern end of the complex, and a strong oblique entrance, which has two additional banks up to four metres high with corresponding ditches. On aerial photographs, the eastern part of the middle bank is club-ended and there is an intern to the inner bank on the east. Minimal investigations, undated. This hill fort is one of several that seems to ring the Kors Caron bog. Sitting on a high outcrop overlooking the lower part of the huge peat bog, Penabanai was probably built when the bog resembled a lake. Penabanai also overlooks the medieval ruins of Strata Florida Abbey, one kilometre to the east, whose monks probably regarded the hilltop ruins as remains from a pagan past. The monks themselves held wool fairs locally near Fair Ross, one kilometre to the north, and 14th century wool was exported from this area through Carmarthen to Europe. The ruins of the old summer homes, or Havote, of the Abbey's shepherds still survive in the mountain landscape, The northern entrance of the fort is regarded as one of the most distinctive and impressive defensive facades in Mid and West Wales, most probably to impress travellers descending from the routeways that traversed the Cambrian Mountains. The rest of the fort only had a simple footing for a single palisade or maybe a wicker fence, so an elaborate entrance held importance, a feature shared by many hill forts in this area. The hill fort can be accessed via a public footpath, but with a very steep climb. Sixteen 
WA2340 Penafroid Cloyd Camp Dreigistrad Murig Keredigion A dramatically sighted contour hill fort aligned northeast and located on a very prominent ridge overlooking a shallow valley which slopes to the Avon Istwith on the northwest side with commanding views across the northern fringes of Course Caron to the southeast. The western side of the fort is built at the edge of a precipitous cliff defined by two ramparts but not contiguous and a possible phased construction is suggested. Occupying a strong position on the hill and incorporating rock outcrops on the southern side, the inner circuit is slighter with no outer ditch and a few traces of stone walling on the south side. Good traces of stone walling on its outer face, possibility of early medieval or medieval reuse. At least three house platforms have been found inside the fort and many more can be seen on aerial photographs taken in winter conditions. Minimal investigations, undated. This stark commanding hill fort sits on top of a peak overlooking Cors Caron to the south, around two miles northwest of Penna Banoi. The camp stitches were cut deep into the bedrock and the profile of the fort seems to reflect a northeast and southerly aspect whilst the west side of the fort is defined by a steep cliff. Many hut circles, suggesting a large community, occur on this monument. The scree falling down the steep west side slopes may be the remains of stone walling. In some places, the walls can still be recognised. In Wales, most hill forts and defended enclosures were built in between 800 BC and the Roman invasion in about 100 AD and sometimes there is evidence of use or reuse up to 400 AD. Some hill forts show earlier Bronze Age or even late Neolithic use, but the vast majority were constructed during the Iron Age. Penifrith Lloyd Camp is not accessible to the public as it is on private land, but there are nearby footpaths with views. episode of 20 Fascinating Hill Forts of West Wales, we shall be visiting Castell Grog Winian, Camp Cloyne D, Garn Goch Vach, and the mega fort Garn Goch Vauer. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, subscribe, or click the bell notification icon to be notified when the next episode is posted.